Hello, I'd like to discuss and demonstrate various aspects of nuclear physics and radioactivity. Uh, here I have uh, listed three common particles emitted by radioactive atoms, alpha, beta, and, and gamma. And the symbol for an alpha particle is just simply uh, the Greek letter alpha. That essentially consists of a helium nucleus, which is essentially uh, two protons and two neutrons uh, held together by nuclear forces. And here is the uh, beta particle. A beta particle is represented by the Greek letter beta, second letter of the Greek alphabet, and the symbol for that would either be uh, E minus or E plus. So the beta particle comes either as a normal electron or as a positron, which is the same thing as an anti-electron. And I've represented the symbol for that as simply a circle with a minus sign in it representing a normal electron and a circle with a plus sign in it representing a positron. And then the third common type of particle emitted by radioactive atoms is a gamma ray. A gamma ray has a symbol, just gamma, the third letter of the Greek alphabet, symbol used for gamma. That's essentially a high energy photon and that photon travels at the speed of light in empty space. Now, I'd like to demonstrate uh, various aspects of these three different kinds of particles. And to do that, we're going to uh, use a Geiger tube and a Geiger counter system. So here I have the tube here. It's uh, essentially like this, uh, the diagram here shows, Geiger counter. It's a, it's a metal jacket with a wire going right down the center and, of course, electrically, the wire is electrically isolated from the rest of this, except that it's connected up to this circuit here. So we put a positive uh, high voltage on the center wire and a negative high voltage on the outer jacket. And then when a particle goes through the Geiger counter, it causes ionization, which then produces a surge in the current. That sends a signal through the Geiger counter as the electrons then uh, surge through the circuit. And that signal can be picked up uh, by the Geiger counter, and we can detect that in uh, three different ways. <clears throat> One of the ways the, that the counter detects the particles that go through is through uh, sound. When I turn the volume up on this speaker, you'll hear some clicks. Click, okay, click, somewhat at random. And these are just uh, particles going through the counter from, from sources surrounding us and some uh, from cosmic rays and just natural radioactive material in the, in the universe around us and in the local space around us. Uh, so we hear those particles going through there, and each time a particle goes through, an electrical surge uh, takes place in the circuit, and uh, it's cooked up to a loudspeaker, so you hear that click. At the same time you hear a click, you see this little neon light flash over here. Neon light flashes every time there's a click on the loudspeaker. And if we have enough particles per minute going through, the dial on this uh, detector will move to the right. Let me demonstrate that. I'm going to take some uh, uranium ore here and hold under that uh, Geiger counter and uh, so that uh, I have a source here, it'll be the uranium ore, and the closer I get it to this uh, window, it's a very thin window on the bottom of this thing, the more particles will go through and the greater will be the count. Let's watch what happens if I take it from some distance away and bring it up closer. Demonstrating that distance is also a factor in this. The closer the source is to the counter or the detector, the greater will be the number of counts that that detector counts, showing again that the detector doesn't detect everything that's taking place in the space surrounding it, just detects really just a relatively small number of uh, events with all the different events taking place. Okay, next I'd like to demonstrate uh, what happens when we take uh, some plutonium-239, which emits alpha particles, and hold that plutonium under the uh, Geiger counter. We use the plutonium as the source, put it near the window of the Geiger counter, and let's watch what happens. Wow, lots of particles. So much so that we, that we uh, probably peg the needle. And uh, 
So, now let's measure the, uh, let's measure what happens when I put this alpha source under the Geiger counter. I'm going to slip it under the Geiger counter, and then I'm going to put just a thin piece of cardboard on top of the source, between the source and the Geiger counter, and we're going to see that this thin piece of cardboard, well, we'll see what happens. Let's watch the experiment and observe what we, what we can uh, we can do. Notice that the thin sheet of cardboard absorbed most of the alpha particles that left that plutonium source. So alpha particles don't penetrate very far. It turns out that they have a very high ionizing power and a very low penetration power. Next I'd like to demonstrate beta particles. To do that, I'm going to take some, some lead 210 here, which, is, uh, which emits primarily beta particles, and we're going to uh, slip that in under the Geiger counter. And then we're going to uh, see if we can shield the beta particles from the Geiger counter. And we're going to see how beta particles compare with alpha particles in terms of uh, being able to be shielded uh, from entering the, uh, the Geiger counter. So I'm going to try a thin sheet of cardboard. And we see it has very little effect in terms of stopping the beta particles from entering the Geiger counter from that source. A sheet of metal. Stops most of the beta particles from that particular source. So beta particles, beta particles penetrate further than do alpha particles but beta particles are not nearly as ionizing as are our alpha particles. That is, in a given distance, alpha particles will cause more ionization than will beta particles as those particles travel through uh, a distance of so many atoms. Uh, now I'd like to show what happens with uh, gamma radiation. Uh, here I have a source of uh, gamma rays, which is uh, lead-214 and bismuth-214 mixed together in this source here. I'm going to put that source just below the window of the Geiger counter and we're going to see what happens when gamma rays leave that source and enter the uh, Geiger counter. To do that I'm going to put that down here at that position just a little bit lower than it was before. So I've got room to put some uh, layers of lead in there if we need to uh, to uh, shield the gamma rays. So let's do the experiment, and while this is happening, there'll be a lot of noise on there, and so uh, I'll just uh, do some experimenting without talking here for uh, just a minute or two. We noticed that the uh, thin sheet of cardboard did practically nothing to stop the gamma rays, and the thin sheet of metal did very little to stop the gamma rays. The thin sheet of metal might have stopped a few stray alphas or betas associated with this source. This emits primarily gamma radiation, and to significantly reduce that radiation, we're going to have to do something a little more drastic than use a sheet of paper or cardboard or a thin sheet of metal. Now, to shield the gamma rays, we're going to have to take some lead and put on top of that source when I have this under there. And we're going to see that the lead will shield the gamma rays, but, but even three or four uh, thicknesses of lead will still not take care of all of the gamma rays. Some of them will still penetrate. Let's observe the experiment. Some gamma rays still getting through. 
Let me remove all of that lead just to show that lead does have a shielding effect, but even almost an inch of lead is not sufficient to shield all of the gamma rays coming from this particular source. So of the three, alphas have the least penetrating power, the greatest ionizing power, betas are intermediate, gammas have the greatest penetrating power, and therefore the least ionizing power. Alpha, beta, and gamma radiation.